Coming up next on The Voice of Alabama Politics, congratulations, Senator Britt. Also, is there a need for a new state house? And felon Mike Hubbard could be back at the state house soon. Count Dracula sleeps in this coffin, but rises every night at sunset. Chick is right. This is awful silly stuff. The horror. All this and much, much more coming up next on The V. Welcome to the voice of Alabama politics, where we tackle the tough issues so you have the hard facts. I'm your host, Bill Britt, and I'm joined today by Susan Britt, research guru extraordinaire, and Josh Moon, columnist and investigative reporter at APR. Welcome. Hi, guys. Hi, guys. Hey, uh, I hope everybody had a good new year uh, and uh, looking forward to 2023. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> This past week, Senator Katie Britt took her seat in the Great Hall of Congress to represent Alabama. She is the first woman elected to represent Alabama from and the U.S. Senate. Uh, she is also the youngest Republican ever uh, elected, Republican woman, and uh, the only Republican woman, I guess, serving right now. But Katie is our Katie, and we are thankful that she's there and we hope she does a great job i'm sure really she proud of her she worked really 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 hard to get that position so proud of her and josh you know she she knocked off a crowded field of, mm-hmm. of two good old boys and one uh, endorsed by trump one endorsed by trump and uh the other one looked like he was going to be a wiener and turned out to be a wiener after mm-hmm. you got through reporting on him but uh a big win for katie yeah, it was. Uh, it was, and you know, honestly, though, I think maybe the uh, the Trump endorsement for somebody else at this point is helping uh, was, was really a, a blessing. Uh, but you know, it, um, I wrote a column about uh, you know her her taking office this week, and um, and and you know, it was really a letter, more of a letter to her, and 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 I hope. Um, uh, you know, I I know her and I are going to have disagreements on things. Okay, and she's uh, you know she has an, uh, a mindset to, to fix things one way. I have a mindset to fix things the other way. Uh, but I, I I believe that there is a consensus among the majority, the overwhelming majority of American people that what we really want is whether you're trying to fix it the Republican way or the Democratic way, we want you to go there and address actual issues. And stop right. with the nonsense, the grandstanding, you know, the Josh Hawley, Ted Cruz, just nonsense that doesn't help anybody ever from, from their districts to, to improve life or do anything. There are a lot of problems in Alabama. Uh, there are a lot of issues that she is uniquely qualified to address. There are a lot of issues yeah. facing women, especially young women in this state, mm-hmm. that she knows well, uh, and I believe that she could have a major impact on. And I hope that she will go there and, and take care of those things and address those things and lift herself up as a respected person uh, instead of uh, taking the path of least resistance and the grandstanding nonsense. We, we do not we do not need a senator. Uh, who is uh, uh, driven by the outrage du jour. Mm -hmm. We need someone who's a a real thinker, a real uh, workhorse, if you may. You know, they say in the Senate there's their workhorses and their show horses. Uh, We don't need show ponies up there. (coughs) You know, and and this performance art of being in the Senate I don't think she will participate in. I don't. We we watched her career from when she was, uh, you know, with Shelby through BCA and all that. And, and Katie is a worker. I've never seen anybody work harder. And even during the campaign, she worked hard, hard, hard. Yeah, she and did. I hope she carries that into office. I think she will. I'm looking forward to seeing what she does with it because we've got like justice. We have a lot of problems in Alabama. We don't have time for the grandstanding. No, we yeah. need somebody that's going to get in there and work on well, the problem. I think if you look at what happened this past week when uh, President Joe Biden and a majority, a minority leader, uh, 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 Mitch McConnell, went to Kentucky mm-hmm. and had that ceremony in front of the bridge. It's going to be a one point, 
a six billion dollar investment or something like that. Yeah. And they talked about bipartisanship and getting things done. I think that's the kind of uh, Senate we need. That's mm-hmm. kind yes, of Congress absolutely. we need. Yeah. Well, mm-hmm. you know, I, I think she could lean on a lot uh, of her, her predecessor and the guy that she worked for for a long time uh, in Richard Shelby and, and just kind of take a look at the way people responded uh, to the retirement of Richard Shelby and the respect that he garnered from, from not just Republicans around the state, but from a lot of Democrats who, while they disagreed with a number of his, uh, you know, a number of his Republican ideas uh, of how to address problems, they also respected the fact that he was never this grandstanding crazy person uh, that went out of his way to draw attention to himself but worked for his state to bring money back in, money that supported Democrats and Republicans in the entire Mm -hmm. state and that's what people need uh, out of her. I think she could do that and she could address a lot of issues right now that that I don't think he was qualified to address or that he even necessarily knew about that would really benefit this state in a major, major way. And I think today there is a there is a faction of the uh, Republican Party, especially here in Alabama, that would think that Ronald Reagan was a liberal. Mm-hmm. They would right. definitely think That's that true. Ronald Reagan was a liberal. That's true. George H. W. Bush, liberal. Mm-hmm. George Bush, pretty liberal. Yeah. I mean, Jesus there, Christ, ultra liberal. Yeah, I'm liberal. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Matthew. You know, the Gospel of Matthew, way too liberal. Yeah, uh, absolutely. But there, yeah. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, I mean, uh, were, as a matter of fact, they were they were essentially bussing <laughs> uh, a whole group of those guys, folks over uh, to, to the vice president's uh, lawn on uh, Christmas Eve. So yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, it's sad. It's sad. It's sad. It's sad because America is at its greatest when it's at its goodest. If that's mm-hmm. the word, goodest. It, if it's not, it's, it is not. It is now. All right. I want to talk about something that's probably going to come oh, up here in the God. next uh, in, in March, and that is. The need for a new state house. Now, the, the state house that they're in is pretty dilapidated, built in 1962. It was part of the Department of Transportation back then, uh, or the, which was called the Highway Department. But uh, it's, it's, a, it's a lousy building. It's just, where's the money coming from? Is And I don't know that they can use ARPA funds anymore, the federal relief money for COVID, to build a big old building. But mm-hmm. that will be a discussion, Josh. Well, good luck to them. <laughs> I mean, uh, <laughs> uh, uh, listen, I, I've got no no sympathy. You cannot you listen. You cannot govern. I, and I'm not. I, I'm, I'm going to say this. I'm going to kind of cop out a little bit here and say that I, I don't really care one way or the other about the state house because if you know the the state house is certainly dilapidated to a, to an extent, and I think there's a reasonable study that was done showing a lot of improvements need to be made. Uh, right. That said. You can't run around telling everybody that all taxes are awful, all taxes, anybody that takes tax money is a deadbeat freeloader, uh, and then come say, hey, we would like 75 million of your tax dollars to build us a new house to go and do your business in. You know, I, the, the folks in this state are, are rightfully going to look at them and say, hell no, no, go and do it in the place over there until it falls down around you like the rest of the place you've been running. All right, well, we're going to have to leave it right there, Susan. There you go. You're watching The V, the voice of Alabama politics. We'll be right back. There seems to be a new wave of aggressive driving lately. You see those people, they are the ones that are tailgating other people because they have to get through their destination now. Weaving in and out of traffic, looks like they could care less about who's around them. There's no one else on the roadway. They're the only one there. Aggressive driving can be the difference between life and death. All because somebody thought they needed to be the front of the line and get there first. Slow down. Don't be the reason that someone else doesn't go home tonight. My dog Jupiter is frightened when I climb too high, the owl said. Check for monsters, Daddy. I did, honey. There are no monsters. You're perfectly safe. Protect yourself and those you love. Vaccinate now. Welcome back to The V, the voice of Alabama politics. Susan, in all its infinite wisdom, the Alabama 
Department of Corrections has decided that because there's so many murders and so many deaths and so many overdoses, that they're no longer going to report those on their monthly uh, reports. Mm -hmm. They're going to save them and do them quarterly if they get around to it. Well, they're too busy writing high schools for <laughs> drugs. That's the first thing. You know, that takes a lot of time and a lot of manpower to go in and write, oh, you know, write the high schools. But, yeah, uh, I think that's because, maybe because of some of the reporting of APR and some of the other uh, media outlets in, the, in Alabama are beginning to pay really close attention and scrutinize what's going on with the deaths in the prisons. I think maybe they're getting a little cold feet on this. Josh, I'm really thinking it's a lot like COVID-19. <laughs> I, I was just about to say that. Oh, I was just about to say that, yes. Go for it. <laughs> no, it's, they're, they're taking the COVID approach. If you don't if you don't test, you don't have it. If you don't report it, it never happened. You know, that's that's, right. uh, we could solve so many problems in this state if we would just stop telling people the, about the problems. You know, it's a, yeah. uh, you know, infant mortality rate. Just stop reporting it. Murder rates yeah. in, in major cities. Just stop reporting them. It's this is so ludicrous. This is such a this is honestly, if you had. If you put in front of me choices of how the Alabama Department of Corrections would choose to handle these deaths, this is the exact thing I would have chosen that they would do. Yeah, not go in to try to clean it up, try to do, fix these things. Just stop reporting it so people will quit talking about it. I mean, oh, yeah. and, and this is the thing, and we say it time and time again. These people are sentenced to prison. Mm -hmm. This is a form of punishment, and we hope a form of correction. They lose their freedom, but they do not lose their humanity. And when they're murdered and, and, and overdosed on drugs, public should know. Yes, the public yeah. has a right to know. We pay for the prisons. Yeah. We pay for their care. We deserve to know monthly how many deaths are a result of homicide, natural causes, suicide. You know, we have a right to know those things. And they think in their infinite wisdom that they can just decide that Mm, no, you don't get that information this time. I mean, this is blatant trying to hide mm -hmm. those results so that they do not get reported on consistently. Mm -hmm. That's all. One hundred percent. That's all it is. Yeah. No, and listen, I, I, to, to Susan's point, the 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 people of this state are right now operating a drug den. That's what they're operating. They're, you're mm -hmm. operating a, a drug den. We know that drugs are coming in. Uh, by uh, a lot of a lot of those drugs are coming in by way of the people who work in those prisons. We know right. this. They know this. We've caught them doing this. Now, I will say they are really good at catching guys who are smuggling in either porn or hamburgers. Uh, we, we've got both of those uh, and, yeah. and punish the people for, for doing that. But some for some reason or another, we can't catch all these drugs coming in. And I hate to point out the obvious. I would much rather them catching the drugs and the porn and the oh, hamburger yeah. because if there's any place you might need a little hamburger is in yeah. prison. Exactly. Exactly. I've seen what they eat. My God, yes. Yeah, you might need hamburger. But yeah, we can catch them doing that, but we cannot catch them uh, bringing in the drugs. And I think that probably a matter of they don't really want to. Yeah. I, I, I feel that's oh, so a, a thousand percent no, that the, that's the case. Are you telling me that in a secure facility uh, like our prisons, uh, where the people are checked coming and going every day, that you really couldn't stamp out this drug problem? I mean, it's yeah. nonsense. That nobody yeah. believes that. This is a th yeah. these are people are making money off of this, and that's the reason why they're not stopping it. Right. We know because during COVID, there were no uh, visitations allowed, yet the drugs still got through. Right. There's only one place they could be coming through. Yeah, yep. that's staff. That's staff. That's it. Uh, I don't I don't think uh, the hamburger delivery guy made any runs during uh, COVID. Uh, let's I want to jump to this one. We got we've got 30 plus lawmakers that are new lawmakers oh, that are God. coming to Montgomery. They'll be coming down next week for their organizational meetings. Where they show them where the bathroom is. Where mm -hmm. one of the first things is to point <laughs> out the bathroom and the exits. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> in case you need to leave. But I thought we might run through a list of a few things that lawmakers, new lawmakers, might want to consider uh, when, they, when they start their work down in Montgomery. And I had the silly notion that they might want to know what they're there for. And they might want to know 
<laughs> why they're there. Just meditate on why you're there for a minute. But and write it down because you'll forget it yeah. by next quadrant, by the next uh, legislative session. Write it down. But I, I think the biggest takeaway is that what you think you're going to do ain't what you're going to do. But Susan, you can elaborate. If you well, want. I can tell you this. If they come to you and say, you know, <clears throat> this is a great bill. This is a one. You're the only one that can champion that bill. Go talk to Clay Schofield right quick. <laughs> All right, just have a little side chat with him about that. They're setting you up for something they don't want their names on, okay? So kind of take that. Another thing is, I know when you walk through those halls, you think you are the, or it, there's something magical about those doors that, that legislators walk through and they think they're the most intelligent people on the planet. Take a note, you're not, okay? You're there to work, not to be smarter than everybody in the room. That's some cool stuff. That well, it's, it's a, that's a which, hard reality. Well, well, but it's, a hard it's, hard. it's, it's yeah. not a lollipop guild down there, okay? It's not. No. Sorry, it's, uh, you know, it, you're, I think uh, uh, former Senator uh, Dick Brubaker uh, wrote, wrote a pretty good advice column uh, a couple years ago uh, in which he told people, you know, kind of watch out, uh, to, what to watch out for. Um, and, you know, one of, the, one of the main things was is, is there's nothing, nobody's going to give you anything without expecting something in return. Right. Um, and and that's the, I think the main thing that people need to keep in mind. If you go down there and it is beneficial to you in some way, personally or professionally, uh, that whatever you're doing, it's probably wrong. Uh, yeah. You know, it's uh, you, you should focus on on doing the things to help the people of your district, uh, help the poorest first, and work your way up the ladder. And if you do that, I think uh, you know you and I could be friends. Well, and, and I I just hope that there'll be less nonsense. I mean, that's really gonna be the challenge for leadership. Yeah. Because, you know, we've talked to these lawmakers, these new lawmakers, and they many of them confess. Their, their constituents don't know the first thing about governing, what goes on in Montgomery. They just yeah. know what goes on on Fox News. That's all right. that they know. And, and don't let the other legislators that have been there get you wrapped up in all of this nonsense. You're there to work. You're not there to start grandstanding and, and showing a bunch of, or participating in a bunch of nonsense. Get your job done. Okay, we're going to have to leave it right there. You're watching The V, the voice of Alabama politics. We'll be right back. Throughout my career, I've seen many crashes, and a lot of the fatalities are from people who haven't worn their seatbelt. Cars have rolled over multiple times. I've had people end up in lakes, um, ravines. I've been looking for people in the woods for a couple hours before. Usually just about every bone in their body is broken, their organs have ruptured, and typically they die. You want to save a life, just simply click a button and put the seatbelt on. Seatbelts really do save lives. There was an old woman who lived in a shoe. She had so many children, she didn't know what to do. She gave them some broth without any bread and kissed them all soundly and put them to bed. Hunger is a story we can end. End it at feedingamerica.org. Speed is one of the biggest factors in a fatal car crash. Your car stops, but your body does not stop at the same time. Your body keeps going, you know, and that could be running into your seat belt, that could be hitting the airbag, something has to stop it, and unfortunately it's something very hard. <laughs> there have been times that we've come upon accidents where if people weren't speeding, they'd probably still be alive today. It's truly dangerous and it puts everybody at risk. There's just no point to it. This kind of stuff has got to stop. Welcome back to The V, the voice of Alabama politics. Talk about a guy who went to Montgomery mm -hmm. and just didn't realize that it was all about him. He thought it was all about him and he ended up in prison. He should have ended up in prison for four years, but uh, the Supreme Court and all their uh, uh, great and hollowed wisdom uh, decided that two years would be enough for Former Speaker Mike Hubbard, uh, now a convicted felon. Mike Hubbard 
gets out uh, this week. Yes, he does. Probably. Week. And he may very well show up at the State House, Susan, just to remind people he's still around. He gets out on Monday, which is just in time for all the beginning of the festivities coming up with the inaugurations and the executive organizational meetings and all that. I don't doubt that he'll show up. I mean, Josh, uh, you know, there is no law that prohibits uh, a, a felon mm-hmm. from lobbying the Alabama legislature. There should be a law yeah. that prohibits that. We could we could grandfather in all those who've been doing it for years, I guess. But yeah. there really should be a law that says a guy like Mike Hubbard, who 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 just ran an orgy of corruption, should yeah. not be able to lobby. But there's nothing to keep him from showing up in his shark skin suits and uh, parading around the state house next week. Yeah, no, and listen, I you know I, I've obviously not not spoken to to my cupboard, and I don't know that anybody else has uh, either. Uh, he certainly deserved uh, what the punishment that he received, and, and probably a bit more than than that for what he did and how he misused his office and, and abused the public's trust. Um, but you know, I'm I'm going to take a uh, I'm going to take the liberal approach here uh, and say my cupboard has served his time. Uh, he has done what was what was demanded of him by you know even though we disagree with it uh, I think he deserved a little more and so I I, I would like to encourage my cupboard uh, to use himself for good and uh, you know and, and if he goes down there uh, and and actually gets back in into the loop uh, in politics uh, to use himself as a cautionary tale and to work to prevent others from doing that maybe he's seen the light maybe he's seen the error of his ways there's been no indication of that uh, by his writing from prison uh, nah. but maybe maybe at least if nothing else you know he can do that I, I'll say it, it's it's hopeful to me uh, you know and, and maybe it's a good sign that he can't uh, hold public office again so he'll never be able to abuse that public trust uh, in that in that fashion uh, but so maybe people will take him showing back up there as a cautionary tale well I, I, I think that he should not darken the doors of the place that he he befouled with his yeah. own I agree. Agreed. Well, but listen, you know I, what? I mean, hey, I, but is it on my cupboard? Should, should we not hold these other people accountable, the Republicans that are there now? Should we not hold them accountable for if they let my cupboard back in? You know, if they let him back into the fold, then they're the yeah, ones that have, yeah. that have done I, this. I, my I cupboard is going to go out and try to do, a, you know, try uh, is going to go out and try to make a living. And I can't fault him for that. But if you let yeah. him back in the door, that's on you. That's true. Well, that's true. Anyway, we will we will see if he. I think he has no shame, so we will see. You know, th- there's an old song, and it goes na 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 na. Hey hey, goodbye, and that is for Mo Brooks. We are glad Hi, to see Lee. you leave. And uh, ah, and as man, my granny, wait, wait, who's gonna who's gonna name all the post offices now? <laughs> and as my granny used to say. I can't say what she used to say, no. but anyway, <laughs> the horse you rode in on. Yeah, about right. that? Or the, you know, uh, don't let the screen door hit you with the good board. Yeah. Yeah. Y'all don't know that one. Can't say that on TV. Anyway, I'm uh, just glad that Mo's gone. He's up in Lake Gunnersville building a, an addition onto his, uh, his, his cabin up there for his grandchildren. So we wish good. him. Good. We, good. We, we enjoy it. Have a good time. And uh, he enjoys retirement. I, 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 wish, I wish him a good retirement. I wish Mo everything he deserves. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> yeah, I don't. That's, you know, that's I mean, right. listen. I, I, yeah. just, you, I, I hope he gets what he what he's put into the world. That's all. That's yeah, know, I do too. It's all yeah. you can hope for everybody, hey. right? Jo- Josh, I asked you before the show, would you like to talk about school choice? Oh God, here we go. Because <laughs> there is going to be a push in this next legislative session for school choice. Mm-hmm. Now, I think Again. when people say school choice, they mean we're going to give you a big pile of cash. Right. And then you can move your kid to any school you want to. Mm. In the reality, no. that doesn't work, right, Josh? No, no that's a, that's school choice. See, I would I would be supportive of that school choice if if there were actually school choice options out there that allowed children in impoverished areas uh, where the schools were not the best, where people know that the violence rates are high and things like that, that they could take their children. Uh, and there's a there was a, a mechanism for for sending them to a better school uh, somewhere else nearby uh, where they where they receive transportation uh, and they could get their kids into those into those better schools uh, until there was an opportunity.
opportunity to fix the other schools. Uh, yeah, I, hey, I'd be all for that. But nobody's going to do that. Nobody, they're not going to allow the kids in, in inner city Birmingham to be bussed down to Mountain Brook to school. No, okay, no. That ain't happening. It's not happening anywhere in this state. What they're talking about is taking public school dollars and transferring public school dollars to private pockets. That's what they're talking about. And there has never been a shred of evidence anywhere that when you put all the factors in play for charter schools, for private schools, whatever kind of privatization that you want to talk about, there has never been a shred of evidence that if you put in all the same factors, you force them to, if they're going to take public dollars to educate the entire public, not pick and choose their students, that they could do a better job than the public schools that we have right now operating today. We have the best education system in the world uh, in our public school system if people would stop attacking it and stop uh, trying to take money away from these pe- people who are doing a damn fine job. Well, Go in there and take that money and find solutions to the problems we have. Fix the existing problems. That We've tried the charter school system. It's not mm-hmm. working. There's only one out of all of them that are working. Lead Academy, my God, is a disaster. I mean, <laughs> it, it's not. that's not working either. Take that money, take that effort, and put it into fi- fixing the existing systems and giving these kids, every kid, a better place. Well, yeah. and, and uh, what Susan is saying, we've got about 30 seconds, but... I mean, it's basically 15% of these schools that are having problems. The yes. rest of them, if you took them out of the, if you took them out of the statistics, Alabama would be doing fine. They drag it down. We've got money right now. Mm-hmm. We've got real money to invest. So invest in those 15% schools. No, we've done the opposite failing. though. We've done the opposite course. though, Bill. Yeah, we, we've done the opposite. We've taken money away from the neediest school systems and called them failing so nobody will go to the, to the schools. Right. right. Well, and we've got to fix it. Let's hope that the legislature looks at real fixing rather than just giving away money. But we're going to have to leave it right there. You've been watching The V, the voice of Alabama politics. You watch us because we watch them.